Hi guys, wanted to finish up with this review on the New York film part number four. So, and uh, this is the Church on the Mud. People wanted to tell me what's the name, Church on the Mud. So, uh, that's why it's so significant and uh, interesting for me. So, we kind of left at this point. Um, let's see. Okay, probably over here. Same day. This so-called coincidence combined with many unusual phenomena reported by eyewitnesses has led some to conclude that the extraordinary force, one not of the earth, one not of the earth, was a more likely arson than either a misbehaving cow or original drought. And what is exactly this unusual phenomenon that they mention? Pitiless rains of fire and sand. Great. Please mark this. She said sand. So this is kind of interesting and probably on the topic. Rose of fire unrolling, igniting entire streets at once. And in a relatively short period of time, many American cities were devastated by such fires. Of course, great fires can be just caused by bad luck, human mistakes, everyday mistakes. That is possible. But when we see just too many of them, all of a sudden, one starts wondering, well, wait a minute, people are using fire since thousands of years. How come exactly in America, at that particular time period, the people became so inattentive that they allowed all this fires to spread, to start, and always the firefighters couldn't help enough. There were many stories when firefighters didn't help, so probably it is a good point, and uh, let's see, uh, no, no facts about the sand though. or the New England's black day. Almost through the full day it was pitch dark as if it is midnight and people had no clue what's happening. Now they blame it on some sort of forest fires. Yes, after decades when uh, the people who knew there were no fires are all gone. I mean, when you have such dense smoke from fires, one would be, of course, able to see smoke and most probably even smell it. Yes, smoke and uh, no light is a good point for nuclear winter or whatever, uh, so probably she's right. Now, some say that even the U.S. Capitol building is uh, built on a much older and stronger base. They say that the time when it was officially constructed, in reality, it was only modified and expanded. I don't know if that's true, but the important point is that there were additions later on. And regardless of how much older is the older part, the interesting thing is that the additions constantly need a repair, while the older parts are of much better quality, they are much stronger. Very strange in this age, where we are supposedly evolving technologically. Yeah, they tell us they're more stupid than we are. They were like, you know, primitive and stuff like this. So I don't think that's a good point because we see what we see and we see the constructions ain't getting damaged for, as they call, thousands of years. So either they're lying to us about thousands of years or still um, that proves that our ancestor civilization was a lot more advanced and more had more quality in the construction in materials or maybe they're lying it's all made with the same technology as what we have today but maybe more artistic maybe more um, large and huge because probably the people were uh, bigger than we are and taller. 
This is the Washington Monument and it appears to be built actually on an older megalithic basis, eroded one. On this second photograph you can see that the material is quite different, the new one and the older one. Probably the eroded parts needed to be reinforced. Well, after seeing this, I no longer ask myself where did the megalithic stones appear on Brighton Beach. Well, they were the rest of the megalithic architecture because it's not that uh, just one monument and that's the full civilization and that's everything. Of course, there is more to it. Of course, and that's what they saw in, uh, in all those ancient buildings. In Russia, in Moscow, in St. Petersburg, I probably uh, visit some Kremlin museums also and see some ridiculous facts that everyone is observing and not even thinking about. Probably that's going to be a couple of weeks uh, in uh, December, first couple of weeks in December, maybe first decade, and. This is also proof that civilization was really advanced because years passed and nothing happens to those buildings. Some of the most beautiful buildings in New York, like the Penn Station, were simply torn down, demolished. Probably somebody simply could not bear the sight of the magnificent angels. They had to be substituted with this type of fellows. So, while Russian researchers were trying to figure out the details of a great flood in Saint Petersburg, because, by the way, the full uh, official history of the city doesn't make much sense as well. It turned out the neoclassical city of St. Petersburg was also buried under mud, but the actual event was not even local. Exactly at that time, the same was reported in Sweden, France, and even San Francisco where the winds would carry away the roofs of the houses. Finally we get to the point when we start to discuss actually the mud flood. That very same storm landed on the shores of England as well and over there it was called the Great Gale of 1824. See, this is what I don't like. I don't like speculating on different dates. What I see is what I see and um, it's based on the dates of the buildings, not the paintings which could be edited and re-edited. In the same way as they avoid giving even a name to the culture, the civilization of the survivors, and instead of that, they call them with different names in different countries to make them look like local people in the same way the global events which uh, contributed to the destruction of this culture in its later stages they are also called with different names in different lands to make them look unrelated in first part i wanted you to say the name of a country and the name of those people they were called ants, just like ants in the forest, but they were bigger than we are. That's why we remember the name giants, and this is how we call the big people. People were taller than we are, and the place they lived in, the trade union, was called Atlantis. But severe weather was only part of the full story. All this story with the falling mud and sand from the skies, where did it come from? For example, in Sicily, they describe a rain of sand, and the sand looked so strange that they describe it as unearthly. 
probably this is described like an earthly and probably it was just a common technology like a uh, huge uh, mining machines were with this uh, sand uh, pipelines which was uh, transferred with the high pressure and could be damaged and so under the pressure this sand is just fountains yeah high high in the sky like, like a rocket <laughs> something like this because if it's done on purpose and all those uh, pipelines and uh, holes mining holes mining drill holes were just um, uh, damaged for purpose which this this is what describes uh, simultaneous strike on all those cities and this is how to erase people because all those who are living in the city they are just the victims and the witnesses of all this uh, unreal situation so thanks a, thanks a lot for watching probably do it and uh, finish this on the last part it's about 10 minutes left so thanks a lot for watching